Hello my Form 4s and welcome back um, to this short class that we're going to be having today. Um, it's not the most interesting topic but it's to get one of the syllabus um, headings out of the way. I'm just trying to kind of get all of these written kind of theoretical things down so that when we do meet each other back in school again hopefully we could do mostly if not only um practical stuff so it's just some matter getting these things all the way so we are heading straight into the syllabus um section one which is on page 14 looking at the production process um so that includes auditions called back casting previous excuse you all these things and then also public relations and social media. So this is a really short class. Um, just going through these elements of the production and casting process. That is literally it. It's really quite straightforward. So the first thing we're going to look at is auditions, callbacks, and casting. Um, so it's just some terms that we need to know, right? So casting... I hope you know already is the process where you find um, suitable actors or performers for suitable for roles in your production. Um, so the ways that you would go about this is either you'd have an open casting call. Um, there's a website called the Trinidad and Tobago Performing Arts Network, which is where you'll find a lot of the casting calls locally. Um, so an open casting call is literally just where anybody can come and audition. You, depending on the kind of production, you may send out a list, a description of the characters that you're casting, and then people are free to come and say, hey, well, I am an East Indian person, I'm 18 years old, um, and this play is looking for a young East Indian girl, so maybe I will be able to fit that role. Um, so yeah, an open casting call is really just where anybody can come and audition. And of course, we are quite familiar with the concept of auditioning. Um, otherwise, and this is what happens in Trinidad a lot, is actually a little bit sad. <laughs> in, sometimes you will say, okay, I've worked with this person before and I think they would make a good fit for this role or I worked with this person before and they're easy to work with this person is a good actor so you'll call them specifically and say hey come on um, come on read for this particular character now see if you're interested in taking this role that kind of thing um and then another term that you should know is cold read so a lot of times in audition you'll do a cold read which is literally just where you have little to no preparation um, before you go into reading a script out loud. Um, so it's I in an audition, you'll either do a cold read, so they'll say, okay, can you read this scene out for us from the play? Um, or they might ask you to prepare a monologue, a dance, a song, um, if it's a musical, and you come and just perform for them what you already have pre prepared. So in... The casting process is usually done by the director and the choreographer. Um, so they will look and see, okay, well, for this play, I want it to be very diverse. I want people of all different ethnicities. So they will look at the people who audition and pick them accordingly. Um, and then they will create a short list of people. So they'll see all the people from the auditions and say, all right, I have five roles but I have 20 people who I think would be good fits let's call, call them back for callbacks um this doesn't always happen sometimes they're not callbacks sometimes you just have auditions or you don't have auditions at all and you just um cast accordingly and you go straight into rehearsals but sometimes especially with um big productions they will have a first round of callbacks where they call back 20 people and then they narrow it down again and they might have a second round or they might just have one round of callbacks just to make sure that whoever they picked is who they really do want to have um, performing. And of course, if you have five rounds of callbacks, the last set of people to make it through the fifth round are the people who will make up the final cast of the show. 
So next we're looking at pre-rehearsals. So the kinds of meetings and the kinds of discussions that will have to ha happen um, perhaps after you've cast and before you even go into rehearsals. So you'll have pre-rehearsal meetings which will be held between the production team and the creative team and that's really just to make sure everything is in order, to set deadlines, to make sure everybody's on the same page, they know what's going to be happening once they go into rehearsals. And then once production starts, they'll end up having production meetings. Um, you, these are usually every week and it's very important to have regular production meetings. Um, to make sure that everybody's up to date on everything, that everything is going as it should. Um, so you're looking at things like scheduling, so you're making sure things are being prepared in the right time, making sure everybody's doing what they have to do, making sure you have everybody for all the rules that you need, and things like that. Um, and then, so you have production meetings all the time regularly, up until the show actually goes on stage and then you don't really have reason to have production meetings anymore. You'll just, after each show, you'll have a little deep debrief where they say, okay, this went wrong, this went right, let's continue with that. In the next show, we should do this, that, the other. Right, so the types of rehearsals. I think you all should be pretty familiar with most of these, but um, it's just a matter of knowing the the terms and um, using them correctly. So a line run or a line rehearsal, this happens after you have already finished rehearsing your blocking, your choreography, all of that, and you just want to make sure that, your ta that the actors know their lines. Um, you'll just have a rehearsal where instead of moving about, you'll just sit down and recite the lines in order to make sure that you have them completely memorized um, even without all the movements and stuff. On the other hand, you have something called a cue to cue rehearsal, which is where you take out all the lines and you just move from one cue to the next. So this usually goes pretty quickly. So you will say, okay, um, so we skip to the part where Nina enters left and then she says whatever and then you skip to the part where Nina exits right and then you skip to the part where somebody else enters and then there's um this sound effect plays or there's a blackout or whatever so cue to cue is literally you just go from one cue to the next instead of going through all the dialogue um and all the actions so one term that we should know is off book or off script which means that you've already memorized all your lines so you don't need to or you should not be using your script anymore and of course you can only do line rehearsals and QTQ rehearsals when everybody is off script um, so that means they know they play they know it like the back of their hand they don't have to hold a script in their hand they don't have to depend on the text to know what is going on so these things line rehearsals and QTQ rehearsals happen in the final stages after you're very well rehearsed this just really to make sure that everything is running as it should so then we have tech rehearsals, as you all know. These are not rehearsals for the performers, but this is where you focus on technical things, lighting, sound, and transitions. Um, sometimes the performers do have to be present, but um, they don't always have to be present. It's really just to make sure all of these things are um, running as they should be. Um, a tech rehearsal might also be a cue to cue. So you go, to, you'll skip to where the lights come up, skip to where the lights go down, skip to where you play sound effect, that kind of thing. Instead of going through all the nitty gritty, you just go from one cue to the next and make sure all the technical things are working as they should. Um, and then you all know about dress rehearsals. Another term that you should know is dry run, which is where you rehearse the production exactly as it will be but you just do it without an audience. So a dry run literally just means that you don't have an audience, but you're doing it full out, costume, lighting, makeup, sound, everything as it would be, but it's just like a practice to see how it's gonna run when the audience comes in. Um, yeah, so dress rehearsal, as the name suggests, is when we get into costume and you dress up 
as you will <laughs> on the night the opening night of performance um right looking now at production processes so these are the little things that you do in between um and on the way to the actual show night itself so a load in or get in is where after you've rehearsed say maybe a few days before or the week before your actual performance you're going to move from your rehearsal space into the performance space this is called a load in or a get in um and it's mostly about moving the set and the props in and also hanging up the lights and the equipment that you're going to use um for the performance and then on the opposite a get out the get out is where um you move everything out afterwards so you put everything into storage you take you strike the set take down the lights um get all the actors out of the space get out um and go wherever you have to go after that <laughs> and of course i hope you know that um the process of taking down the set is called striking the set so in looking at social media and public relations i did tell you all that this is going to be a short class um so we're just looking at some of the things that you might want to post um online or you might do in order to promote your production so we're going to use Tija and his brothers as a case study, just looking at some of the things that they would have posted on their Instagram. Most times you'll have a social media manager who might also be the creative director or somebody who is on the creative team or it might be the producer or you might actually hire somebody separately, a photographer or something, to be your social media and public relations officer. So you can see here, this was from the auditions. So they are not just saying that auditions are going on, but also inviting people to come and audition. Um, when, audition when rehearsals started, they're kind of, you know, prepping the audience for something that's going to come. So they're sharing photos from rehearsal to get people excited. They will also share the date from before, tell you when it's going to be, where it's going to be. So people start anticipating then. So then... You might do something like a countdown. Here you see three weeks away and they're advertising tickets. They're telling you where to get tickets, um, telling you the venue, all these sorts of things. So you'll have a photo shoot and stuff, hopefully to create um, content for this. Um, things like this, which is where you work with. So they worked with Ansa Macal, which is a, a non-governmental organization. Um, and they got them, got them to donate tickets for students from our underprivileged schools to come and see the show. So you'll send representatives from the production to go and meet the people and thank them and collect the money and things like that. So this is real public relations where the, um, the production is really not just um, being put on stage, but you're also reaching out into the community, reaching out into organizations and stuff like that, showing your face, showing your thanks um getting sponsors and you're gonna put it on social media to let people know what's going on behind the scenes so you have things like these where each day you'll release a new thing um showing the different characters the different actors of course and these people will post it on their own social media as well you see another um countdown here and they're showing you the prices and everything so yeah, so all of this is building anticipation, especially when people share it on their own social media and they'll be like, hey, look, my friend is in, in this play, I might go and see it, that kind of thing. Building anticipation, that's really what social media management is about. Then when the show actually starts, you're going to see, of course, they're going to boast about how full their audiences are, so they're going to continue promoting, telling you where to buy tickets, telling you that the show is on, um, really just constantly promoting and and make convincing people that it's worth seeing obviously if you see a full audience you're gonna think hey maybe i'll go and see that show because look how many people are in the audience um and then afterwards you do things again going out into the community so if you do a school visit for instance these people from the cast went to the school um you take a picture with the children and make it look nice <laughs> 
and again so this these were pictures from when the show actually started so all of these things are building anticipation people are gonna say hey look at the sets look at the costume and in the show um, maybe we should go and see it it looks like it's gonna be very good um, you show pictures with people from in the audience you show reactions from the crowd seeing people enjoy it seeing something nice so people will be on um, encouraged to buy tickets and come that is it I did say that this was going to be a short class um, it was really short because I know y'all had a lot to take on last week it was a very heavy topic next week we'll go into a somewhat heavy topic again but I just want to get to give you all a little bit of an ease up from last week's class um, but that was it we just covered one syllabus topic there boom splang pow. Thank you for paying attention.